Ooh, I hate the cold. I absolutely hate the cold. I suppose I could put the heating on inside. I keep turning the thermostat down. But minus five outside. I am, however, going to attempt to have a cook up out there in that chilly temperature using an ancient garden ornament. However, they did used to use it for cooking years ago, but they seem to know what they're doing. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Okay, so I've brought down my old and heat crack chimney. It's a clay one. I haven't been used for a long time, but I've got to put some extra sand in here, which I've got there because, God, this ground today is absolutely frozen. The sand actually dissipates the heat from the clay. clay. And I've, I've used this, God, some years, a couple of years, a couple of years ago, I think. So I figure it's time for a bit of a top of a sand to stop it cracking. Today it's like five degrees below or something. Oh, well, the ground's got like permafrost in it, I think. It's a nightmare. This last winter has been pretty terrible. Now, I don't know how much sand you're supposed to put in these. It's to sort of dissipate the heat in there. I think that's enough. Otherwise, I'd be, I'd be cooking sand, wouldn't I? It's quite big in there, actually. Surprising. I just made a grill there. Let's get that out of the way. I just made a grill out of wire. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put paper in there. Going to split some wood in a second and get that going as a fire. But because it is so cold out here, it doesn't look cold, trust me. It is absolutely freezing. I'm going to have to get it hotter, and I think somebody told me charcoal will burn hotter than the wood. So I've got a bit of old charcoal, pinched it off a mic. And fingers crossed we can get some smoke and flames coming out of this. So I've got my hewing axe here. Oh! And just going to split some more wood down. I mean, this is a lovely axe, beautiful. It's called, I think it was called a demon axe, is it? There it is. Demon axe, I've got it pretty sharp. Beautiful shaped handle on it. Lovely curve on it, I love it. And it's not too heavy for me, who's got fairly thin wrists now. 38 years of lumbering furniture around in shops. Eventually, you know, takes its toll. I'm sure all this is going to burn. Fingers crossed, anyway. There we go. Alright, let's see. If we can get something to burn here. I've got a feeling it's going to eat the wood. As long as the wood gets hot enough to start the charcoal off, that would be pretty handy. Let's try that. Anything playing with flames goes down well with me. Especially when there's too much wind for it to light. Oh, that's gonna go. That's gonna go. Probably run out of everything. There we go. Hopefully the smoke is... Oh yes, we have lift off, people. We have lift off of the sparks going in the old tackle shack. I might have to go and get some more wood. Oh, it's warm. It's going to take a while for this to heat up, the clay. I've sunk it in the ground down there to the V, but eventually I'm going to move it right down to another sort of base camp we're working on. Let that burn down first. I always like looking down there, you can see the uh, flames coming up. There they come. <laughs> don't look down there, Graham, there's no moustache and no eyebrows. Now, of course, I don't know being sub zero, and in fact, it looks like it's starting to snow. I don't know being sub zero whether that will actually need a lower temperature there to dry it out or whether it's going to expand the moisture in it and crack it. I really don't know. Because I've normally only lit this in the summer, once or twice in the winter, but you can see down there, very, very hot coming out the top. Oh yeah, oh it's lovely and warmer. Yeah, you can just see bits of steam coming out the side here. 
Here's the hint. Stone cold, absolutely weird. Warm, slightly warm there, very slightly warm. You might be able to see some of the steam coming off it there now. Who knows, it could explode and fall on the floor and it's a big failure. But I am trying. You can't say I don't mind trying different things. I'm not one of those, hello everybody, let's go fishing. What a wonderful day today is. Hi. I don't, can't do all that pandering like that. I've got to do something, I've got to do something structural. Build things, burn things. One of the worst things about growing old is growing old and not growing up. Unfortunately, I've managed to keep and retain a little bit of childish, boyish enthusiasm of experimentation. And it's awfully hot. I think now is the time to put some charcoal on there. Luckily, it's Mike's charcoal, so it's free. I did say I'd store it for him. I just gotta tell him I'm storing it in here. And I'm gonna be dining on Patagonian scallops. Some vine tomatoes I'm going to put in with them as well. A drizzle of lime, not lemon salt and pepper, cooking oil with a substantial knob of butter. Now the trick with the scallops they say is to sear it so I've got to get this hot and being outside it's cold. I'm going to put the oil and the butter in here ready and I'm also going to take a bit of bread because with that in there not too much oil the juice is going to be worth mopping up with a nice piece of bread like this. I think the main thing with Patagonian scallops here is to let somebody from Patagonia cook them for you, Graham. Bit of oil. Notice the age of the butter knife. A little bit of butter on there. Well, I'll go on a bit more butter. Why not indeed? I figure that's enough. I'm going to take these vine tomatoes and whisk them through whole and put on, I say, now, yeah, it depends how hungry you are guys, these are very filling. Any shellfish I find are filling. That's a meal there, I know, I'm gonna save that for the wife because she'll come in and say, why didn't you save me some? He's a lonely chap, isn't he? I think I might dine on him now. Take that out with us. Once we are out, I can squeeze that on. These small tomatoes are actually called piccolo, piccolo tomatoes. Fridge. Into the roll, which I've now cut in half, I'm gonna insert a little bit of butter. There's a lot of butter going in this dish, Graham. Then, when that warms up, because it's cold out there, there's no chance of spreading the butter. It will melt and dissolve into the bread. That's the theory. Just check out the steam coming off, off of this chimney here, guys. That is not smoke. That's steam where it's been drying out. Inside, nice and hot. I might just get the uh, G-stove tongs and move that across a bit. So easy, easy to do it in here on the G stove, easy. But I want to cook it outside, so I'm just going to rake those around using this. I'll probably dine in here. Let's just rake those coals a little bit. They're going to be hot enough. I pull them to the front. The big one's going to be a bit of a trouble. Now this can go on the top and then I can warm the bread on there so I'm not, as you would think, completely stupid. Now these scallops are going to take three minutes but it needs to be hot apparently. What they're saying, the secret to cooking scallops is to sear them. So I'm going to let this get as hot as I can without combusting could be fun if it does go. Look, it's pouring off. 
I know you people don't believe me when I say it's freezing cold out here, but there's my pond. Look. No, I'm not going to walk on it, no. Even the duck is frozen. Trust me, it is really locked up solid. Even in the grass. Oh yes. Here we go. That is indeed hot. This will not take long at all, people. I'll leave that there, which is sensible so the handle's warm when I want to touch it again. The piccolo, the piccolo. Piccolo tomatoes, I'm just going to cook whole. I'm not going to split them at all. I'll let that get as hot as I sort of dare, and then I'm going to shoot it all in there, scallops and tomatoes together. It should make a nice sizzling sound. The thing is, when you cook on wood, unless you have a huge fire, it's very difficult to control the heat. And outdoor cooking is always very tricky because you've got to control the heat and you can't. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, you load the fire again, then you get smoke. So charcoal is much more even to cook over. It's a bit more of a constant temperature. I feel that's hot enough to put in there, boys. That's smoking. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Soup apparently is to keep them moving all the time or turning them. Three to four minutes max. Less steam coming off the outside, so this that's warm now. That's that's nice and warm. And this is a proper winter sky with a south easterly blocking high come in. And this is the one that freezes and bursts the pipes in the UK. It gets under the eaves on some of my properties and it's a nightmare. Oh, Colin's over there. You guys won't see him with his camera. You might see a speck against the horizon coming up just above the trees. He's obviously smelt the cooking scallops and possibly the burning bread. That just needs to be just take the heat off a bit. I take the temperature off it and yeah, he's working way over there in the horizon. I did put a mouse out I got on the trap in a log store and I put it out over here. There's a lot of dead branches up there and I've been up there with a the ladder. I was going to make an actual hunting tower up there or viewing tower. We don't do any hunting here in the UK. Just go straight down Tesco's. But there's quite a lot of dead ones up there and he loves being up the top perch there. And he was up there chewing this mouse to pieces, stripping it off. I've got to tell you boys, it's smelling very fishy in there and there's a lot of sizzling going on as well. Let's just have a look. I'm going to try a flip here boys. I've seen Sheffy people do this, look, I've seen them do it. It's going to go, it's going to go in the grass and it, yeah, don't laugh, please. I've got two more minutes to go. I can see the tomatoes are softening now, the piccolo, piccolo, tomatoes, they're softening. So, Patagonia, that's uh, South America. I don't know who it's near, Argentina. And these are wild caught Patagonian scallops. We'll find out what they taste like, they look very nice. I can see the tomatoes are softening now, the Piccolo, piccolo, tomatoes, they're softening. So, Patagonia, that's uh, South America. I don't know who it's near, Argentina. And these are wild caught Patagonian scallops. We'll find out what they taste like. They look very nice. Here, yeah, that's warm, lovely and warm now. Imagine. Bread. Yeah, that's warm. Take that off, put the bread on there. 
way to do this, Graham, is to do it that way. That way, heat the bread first, and also warm this up so I don't have a cold meal. Boys, I think we're, I think we're pretty well done. Got a cook again, it's still going a charcoal there. Check my bread out. Yeah, that's warm. Right, head come on, I shall serve up. And here, folks, we go. Just a, a smidgen of salt, a merest, merest dash of pepper, a, just a drizzle here of lime juice, and wait for this, the lime goes into the glass. If anybody's never had this before, I can assure you, a nice glass, glass of lime juice is quite refreshing. Bread I topped up in here. Fit for a king, boys, fit for a king. Here we go in the tackle shack. OMG. Ah, see, just a glass of lime. Slice of lime, let it swish around in there and it is very refreshing. The bread I can feel is warm. Let's try one of these kiddies. Hot, I imagine, is steaming. I shall probably end up with a lovely juice. Probably end up eating the microphone lead as well. Mmm, very nice. And of course, piccolo, piccolo tomatoes. Oh, bread's warm. People, I'm going to tell you this one thing, one thing. The wife put me onto this. The one taste that's coming through there that is making it is the slice or drizzle of lime. Thanks for watching, guys. Maybe try it yourself. Look, I didn't go out and catch them. I didn't forage them. I did forage them after fashion. Yes, from the supermarket. But if you go around and shop around and just take your time to look along, you know, the different chilled sections, meats, fish, shellfish, and then you can look up a recipe. I've made this recipe up. The biggest thing I put in there is lime. It's really good. If you guys have got any other recipes for these scallops, different ways to cook them, let us know, because I can assure you I will be eating them again. Whew. Cooking in minus five. I must be one sandwich short of a picnic. What I haven't, I'll tell you what I've noticed. We seem to be getting, I suppose it's every year almost, but we get what we call a blocking high. That's a high pressure. And it comes across a sort of Siberia, Russia, and it fires in an east to southeasterly, blizzard-like, cold, freezing conditions. I mean, in the road outside, even this year, it was going horizontal. The snow was just blowing straight across the road it did get choked out because we're on a hill, so people could actually go down the hill at speed and out of control sometimes and end up in the hedge. Also, coming up, well, almost impossible. But what they were saying this year is because less people are on the roads, the cars aren't crushing in the salt that the gritters put down on the, uh, on the road surface. So the gritters go out, they spray it all over everywhere, and you think that dissolves you know, any snow and turns into sort of slush. Turns out it doesn't really, you need the cars to drive over it to crush that salt up and sort of make it slushy and then the new snowfall doesn't land on it. However, we did have a bit of snow, you know, this year. It was nice, not quite enough to, enough for me to shovel away from the front. I couldn't get out my gates, but I have noticed a change in the weather. Have you noticed it as well, guys? Also, something you don't see every day of the year. An entire tree frozen solid. Hedgerow, bushes, everything. I drove off to have a look at it. I thought, can that be true? It's in the middle of nowhere. It turns out, I think it was a burst pipe, maybe in the road or somewhere. It had sprayed, I guess, the water everywhere. And being we've had these freezing temperatures, it had frozen the ice all along the hedgerows, in the tree and everything. It was quite something. Get a bit dirty now being traffic going along the road, but quite... Well, I've never seen anything like that before. Can you imagine what would happen, you know, like if you had these great big waterfalls that you see in Alaska and all those places where they freeze, actually freeze. 
We think it's cold over here, say with a minus five or a minus 10, and some of the guys over there get, I saw minus 49.8 somewhere in America or the Rockies or who knows where. I'm just glad I don't live in those sort of temperatures. Well guys, I better go and turn the thermostat up now, get a bit warmer in there, see if I can thaw the wife out. She's sitting there shivering out there. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Who knows what it'll be. Eventually we get out of the lockdown, fingers crossed, and we can get out and do some proper fishing. Meantime, keep supporting the show, keep watching it. I'll try and put some together and get some good fish in them. I've got about 25 full films to go up, all brand new. I'm hanging on to them, just clinging on to them until the spring comes when people hopefully will be able to get out. Take it easy out there, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next episode.